Okay, day two of our visit to the Crema, huh? Pima. Pima Air and Space Museum. We're gonna look at the outside airplanes today. And they have just all kinds of aircraft, US and foreign and executive jets that were used for Lyndon Johnson and John F. Kennedy. So there's, there's quite a bit to see. And we'll take you by some of the, the big bombers and some of the Navy aircraft they have along with the Air Force over there. Like we were saying the other day, that's an F-8. It looks a lot like the A-7, except for the wing, the whole wing broke on, on the back with a big hydraulic <clears throat> cylinder. It had a, it's kind of hard to explain, but they used them as reconnaissance back in my day. And that's the mid seventies. The A4 Skyhawk. And, and the Harriers and just everything. So we'll bring you along for the second day. Okay, this is the A7E. The model that I worked on when we flew aboard the Constellation carrier. It's a little bit different than the others. You can see the rocket and missile rack there on the side of the fuselage. Part of this that you see sagging down here is part of the air brake. It was a huge air brake that sagged down. You can see inside the, the wheel well. All the lines, hoses, many time I worked in there. <clears throat> And they've got all the little doors latched shut. But this panel right there had a hydraulic pack behind it. And each one of them screws that you see there was a different kind, a different size, different length. And what you always did was just unscrew the panel and you put tape over it so the screws wouldn't fall out because otherwise you'd have to get a diagram to figure out which screw went where but anyway here's the a7e and that's where you would hook up the huffer to start it huffer was nothing more than a, a mini jet engine that would blow air into the engine to get it started. And the avionics door. And normally these would not be here. But that's how they keep people from getting in there. But and there's the, the missile rack. The A's and B's and C's didn't have that. You can see the launch bar mechanism. Up in there would be where the gun was mounted. The barrels would stick out. It was a 20 millimeter Gatling gun type. Each one of the shells were six, seven inches long. And that's the step that I stood on? Yep. 
one night I was turning up the bird and one of my friends brought Tammy out to stand on the side of the airplane as I was running it. And she was standing on this little step here and up there. And then when you open this panel, a ladder fell down. And she was standing on the side of the airplane as I was running it and I was showing her everything. We could have gotten so much trouble that night. Up there, that little vein sticking out is the angle of attack vein. But anyway, it was a hell of an airplane. Anyway, there's an E8 or A6, A6 intruder. And most of these are painted up like the Kitty Hawk. But, uh, that's an A6. We also had those on board. And they might still be flying them. I don't know. But, oh, there's just all kinds of airplanes. I'm going to give you a, a shot next to this A6 intruder. There was a movie, it was called Flight of the Intruder, where this was highlighted, this, this aircraft. But there was another one just like it. It was a four-seater. And it was called the EA-6. <clears throat> and they've got one of those. Right there. That's the EA-6. Had four, four people. The A-6 had two. But, uh... And a lot of times these A-6s were used as tankers as well. Here's a famous video of a guy on a flight deck getting sucked down this intake. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but the A7, if you looked at the front of it, sitting over there, that, that intake was a giant vacuum cleaner. Sometimes after it rained and the airplane was started, you see little mini tornadoes down on the ground right, right underneath the intake. But we're going to walk out here to the back to the big bombers now they've got one here that you don't normally see but uh, we'll try to take you around to all of them but like we said yesterday it, you know my there's just so many airplanes here 400 airplanes 80 acres the biggest air museum aircraft there is. Second, it would be Wright-Patterson. But you got some oddball airplanes, experimental airplanes, international, just all kinds of stuff. So we'll bring you along. This is another F-4 Phantom. That's a YF-4J. One time I saw an Air Force bird was painted black and orange and it was the meanest looking airplane I'd ever seen. But this is one you don't normally see used during the Korean War, basically. A version of it. The F-9 Panther. I can't remember now what the name of the movie was, but the character's name was Lieutenant Brubaker and he gets shot down in it over Korea. But uh, anyway, and that great big hawking thing back there is a, what they call the guppy. The weirdest looking airplane you ever saw in your life. But it carried a lot of stuff for, for NASA and Hubble the Hubble telescope and just all kinds of stuff. But, and you never heard an airplane called a sissy name like Pussycat, right? They were always Tomcats or Demons or, you know, Panthers or... Yeah, they, they do have a pink plane here, right there. It was a, a French, kind of like the Mirage. 
but yeah, they it was pink because it was camouflaged like in the desert. But uh, and over there you see a, a presidential plane. It, it was used for Johnson and Kennedy. I think there's another one just like it in uh, Dayton. But anyway, and the Columbine, I believe there's one of those as well in Dayton. One of the first ones that uh, President Truman used in Eisenhower uh, when they were president. But anyway, we're going to walk to the back back here. And you get a really good shot of that bomber. Now let's go towards it. The Golden Knights parachute plane, like President Bush jumped out of when he did his parachuting thing. Another good shot of the Columbine with the guppy in the background, but we're headed this direction. So. And there's quite a few B-52s here. Uh, there's one in the restoration hangar right now. Two parked back here. There you see the guppy back there. About the weirdest airplane you'll ever see. Just anything and everything that you can imagine is here. Okay, here's the B-36. The one of the the biggest bomber that the United States ever built. And from what they told us, this is one of only four surviving but it is the strangest looking airplane. And of course it held a lot of fuel and there was a tunnel that went down the length of the airplane that the guys could use to go from one end of the plane to the other. But it, it is just enormous. And it's even bigger than the B-52, the wingspan, and you can see the reverse props on the engines with the jet engines on the outboard wing this thing is just incredibly huge And it's not in too bad a shape for one of only four surviving. You can see the huge tail back there. Fly non-stop. Pretty much. You look at them props, how big they are. How long it took to start this thing up and how big of a runway this thing would need to get off the ground. Just a lot of different airplanes. Right next to the 36 is the uh, 47, B-47. This one is a EB-47E Stratojet, but in a series of long range bombers. Some of these airplanes look like you could just start them up, you know? Mm -hmm. The better shot of the 36. It's just an enormous, enormous airplane. 
And we're sitting right next to it on the other side is a B-52, so you can kind of get an idea of the size of this thing. This was also in the movie Strategic Air Command with Jimmy Stewart. But on farther down is a is a bomber that I want to get some video of. Another shot of the 36. Try to give you an idea just how big this thing is. Then, of course, there's the B-52. A lot of these were lost during Vietnam. Now here's the one you don't see very often. The B-58. A Delta Wing configuration. <clears throat> this, this airplane was kind of made famous in the movie Fail Safe, where they had a glitch in the computer systems and then they sent them to bomb Russia in Moscow. Henry Fonda, played the president in that movie. You don't see these very often. Now, there may be some around, but you just don't see them that often. A Delta wing configuration, the, the B-58. I don't know how, let's see how long it lasted in. In service, this might tell us. 59 to 70. Considerably smaller, right, than the 36 and the 52, but just as lethal. I knew a guy I worked with many years ago. His name was Jack Pogue. And he worked on these when he was in the Air Force. But you can see in the evolution of the airplane, the aircraft, the US learned every time they built a new airplane Of course, there's no current bombers here. They're still in service. We like the stealth bomber, but this is one you don't normally see a lot of. The B-58. Give you a long range view of the B 58. Just a real sleek, nasty looking bomber. I got such a glare on my camera from the sun that I can't really tell just how much I'm getting it, getting it, but you get the idea. Like I said, you don't normally see these, but I'm sure there's some around, but probably not very many. Here's a, a Dassault Mirage. <clears throat> you can see 
down there. <clears throat> and I believe it has Swiss markings. Built by the French. Here's a strange one from uh, the Royal Air Force. Counter rotating props on the engines. It says it's an airborne early warning. Kind of strange. I guess it, the counter rotating props let the engines produce more horsepower. But, uh, I'm sure quite an airplane. That should look a little familiar. You see these on a lot of the movies where they call them the Sandys. They, they flew air cover for downed pilots in Vietnam. Not exactly, but... They called them a Sky Raider, I believe. Yep, Sky Raider. They could linger over the target much longer than a, a jet could. Another one with counter rotating props. Experimental. <laughs> really strange, isn't it? Wouldn't want to get in that thing's way. Airborne Command Post. EC-135J. Strategic Air Command. Although it's not marked that way, but... High-level commanders would fly around in that thing so they couldn't be targeted. I'm gonna show you some other really awesome airplanes. Should look a, a little bit familiar. B-50, Super Fortress. Actually, a KB-50J. A little bit like the 29. You can see the resemblance. Well, that one's got its rudder missing. But, still. One of those airplanes that just unique. KC-97G. The Strato Freighter, aerial tanker. You can see how the, the upper part of the airplane is enlarged. For freighter carrying things like i said there's, there's just countless airplanes here it's just incredible and they're going to expand this museum to include vehicles 
I'm not sure where they're actually going to put them, but they've got a bunch of them. Well, that's a National Guard base over there, but tanks and half tracks and vehicles of all kinds and sh shapes and sizes. And this was just like the cod that was on board the carrier. They could fly people on and off, bring some cargo aboard, long range. You can see the the radar dome on top of that one, but they've got the E2 Hawkeye, and that's the one you normally see with the big circulating radar dome on top. But uh, anti-submarine. And the E-1B over there. And this might look familiar to you if you've ever seen, watched the John Wayne movie, The Hellfighters, where they, he's portraying Red Adair and they put out oil well fires. And in that movie, his cargo plane deliver supplies to them and the front of the underside of this nose opens out to let cargo in and out of this airplane. This is this is uh, made up as a Mac airplane. Military Airlift Command. But the nose of this airplane opened up. Those great big huge doors to load and unload cargo. But that was portrayed in that movie. The C-124, the Globe Master. Can you imagine if they had a C-5 Galaxy here? That damn thing would be just dwarf some of these things that are already here. But anyway, yeah, these big, huge doors would open up to load and offload cargo and ramps. They had ramps that would go up inside there. Here's a couple of C-130s down there. Them things are still flying. Well, I left Tammy alone. She's sitting in the shade while I'm out here doing my thing and knee deep in nostalgia. So I'm gonna make my way back to where Tammy's at. Rescue her. I could spend all day out here. It's just almost like coming out to a, a car junkyard, you know, when I was restoring old cars. You just get lost in the moment of all these old airplanes that you've seen in movies, you've read about, never seen one up close. And the Coast Guard is in the game as well. I mean, you, you think of the, the different branches of the military, Air Force, Marine, Navy, Army, well, the Army Air Corps and Coast Guard. Here's another Mac military airlift plane. You just, you know, you, you can't see them all. It's just in this damn guppy thing over here. I mean, I'm telling you, it, you know, if that's not the weirdest looking airplane you ever saw in your life. But anyway, like I said, I'm gonna make my way back where Tammy is pick her up and there's still a couple of hangers we never made it in yesterday so I'm out here walking the, the outside before it gets too doggone hot in the tri-tail of a constellation which there is one somewhere around here I'm not sure exactly where it's at right now but there is a constellation out here but anyway 
You wouldn't think this thing would ever get off the damn ground. Or if it did, it would come apart. But there's one. And they use those for civilian aircraft as well. The tri tails. Yeah, she's a, in need of a, some repairs, but the super guppy. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Okay. Whew. It's getting hot already out here. So anyway, we're gonna I'm gonna make my way back. There's also helos of all different types, shapes, sizes. And the Navy used these as well. You can see how the rotors folded back so they didn't take up near as much space on a ship. But some of these airplanes look so good that you could actually think that they just start them up. There's the civilian model over there. Transward Airlines. And I hope I'm getting it because there's such a glare on my camera that I'm not sure, but. You can see it setting over there. And behind that big tall tail, that's like an, uh, an L-1011. Yep, there's civilian airplanes here too. So anyway. The Combine was assigned to General Eisenhower while appointed NATO Supreme Allied Commander. Eisenhower used two other constellations, Columbine 2 and Columbine 3. One of them is in Dayton, Ohio. But it's the constellation. VC-121A. So I'm going to... I get sidetracked with all these different airplanes. So, like I said, somewhere back there in them airplanes where them trees are, Tammy's sitting in the shade, so i got to make my way back to her. Here you can get a shot of all the different types of helos. I actually rode on a CH-46 once. It landed us on the carrier. Super Cobra. The Sea Knight is what those were called. I'm walking back over here so I can give you a better shot of the sky crane but I gotta show you this I use these in desert storm enormous helicopter air refueling probe out the front the two engines But this is what I wanted to show you. The sky crane. That damn thing can just lift huge amounts of payload. I can't remember now what the guide said, but the most heavy lifting 
one they've got. Okay, you've heard about them. So there it is, the cruise missile. Let's see if I can make sure I get it all in there for you. But I'm not sure if you can read this, but it's bright and sunny out here and very hot. But anyway, there's the cruise missile. Basically, we are in the NASA hangar and my phone is too hot. And some of it is really dark in here and I can't use the flash because my phone's too hot. But that's a mercury capsule there. You can see this. I gotta catch up to Tammy. Take you upstairs and see inside. Apollo command module. See the hatch up there. I think there's enough switches and levers. Pretty cool. Apollo command module. Ed Gibson, if you can't read it. From Apollo to the Challenger space shuttle. Blackhawk. There's another drone. You always have to look up because there's all kinds of things hanging from the ceiling, too. Well, I'll give you this first, the space shuttle. Now, there's a full-size one of these in Houston. But you get a good idea what the flight deck looks like on the space shuttle.
That's not all the switches and buttons and levers. <laughs> Pretty neat, isn't it? There's a Apollo capsule. And look at that. Captain Kirk, where are you? Or Jean-Luc Picard. You get a better idea of the, I think that's the X-15. I showed you that just a minute ago, but that's a Predator drone. You can see just how big they actually are. And you kind of get it, a good idea with the uh, Black Hawk in the background. <clears throat> and there's all kinds of information on it. Now this is kind of cool. A little rover. It's kind of neat. One of these days, some of you will be living up there. Lord. See that car up there? It's a solar car that a university built. I remember hearing about it, but I can't remember now exactly what it's called, but. But they probably got it here somewhere. Oh, this thing's called the Snow Goose. And there's that little radio plane up there. I don't want you to go over there. So. Uh, I think you probably can't read that. But. Solar powered race car. But I can't get over there to it. They won't let you. Oh, I got a, that missile I showed you just a minute ago. There's a plaque over here. This thing. Surface to air missile. It's pretty neat in here. 
I can't take any flash pictures because my camera's too hot from being outside, so. It's pretty cool, isn't it, Tammy? Mm -hmm. Here's a unique airplane. YC-125A Raider. It's a tri-motor. I'm going to make my way over to the miscellaneous and what they call firefighting. Now inside this gate is a, that's a NASA 747. But if you look way back there, that is a stealth aircraft of some kind. But I, I, you can't get close enough to even tell what it is. And beyond the 747, there's a B-52 over there in that air. But this is kind of, I guess, their boneyard. There's a C-130 sitting there. And there's an old tank sitting over there. But that, I just saw the, house, the shape of that thing. And it's, it's some kind of stealth fighter, but I don't know what. This is a huge, huge facility. That is actually a DC-10. I thought it was like an L-1011, but it's a mobile eye hospital. You never know just what's around the corner in some of these places, so. But that reminds me, it's just kind of a little stealth that air airplane is. Night fighter, I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what it is. What? You can't mistake the shape of it. Yeah, make my way up back up to the front again. Tammy's is at one of the picnic tables up in the shade. It is really, really hot. Up in the upper 90s. So, we've been here for another two and a half hours, three hours today. And we're just about wore out again. I think I did Tammy in yesterday. So, and make my way back up to the front. They say this is 80 acres and 400 airplanes, but I think it's bigger than that. Well, they should know, but it just seems to me that there's a whole lot more than 400 airplanes here. If you count everything outside and everything inside. Civilian, military, experimental, you name it. International. So, uh, oops, I got to go this way. We'll sign off for now. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you ever get out here, the Air and Space Museum here in Tucson is just, you got to come out and see it. Okay, so long for now.